Welcome back to Basketball Colorado. I'm your host, Matt Langley, and we're on our final uh, mailbag question from the Centennial League Grandstand, and it's asked by uh, Mike here who says, this is more of a rhetorical question than an actual question. We have 10 to 11 guys on team during an evaluation event. With that many guys on each team, why have short games? Everything gets diluted in that format, makes it a waste of time from an evaluation standpoint. And I think this just goes to speaking about the expectation of what the Centennial State Grandstand is supposed to be. It's a Division I um, evaluation period, so we have to, when I say we, the powers that be, I guess, the powers that be need to make it so that Division One basketball coaches will want to come. And also at the same time, because it's run by state organizations like Chassa and the Wyoming version and the New Mexico version and the uh, Coaches Association and so on, you want to try and give as many kids as possible the best chance to get in front of uh, Division One coaches that they can. And that's a noble idea, but when you have... 174 kids spread across, I think, 16 different teams. You have two different, even though they're very close, and you know it's a very, it was a very easy walk to get from Cherokee Trail to um, Fox Ridge Middle School. When it's seen as, and it's put out in the literature as, the top 80 is in one gym, the other 80 is in the, is in the second gym. Um, you know. I'll, the division one coaches unless they know of a kid and it did happen know of a kid in the second gym then they'll go down and see it uh see them play but for the most part they're going to stay in the gym that has the most prospects and i think it just goes to speaking of what does this evaluation event need to be i think um you know from all from from Aside, uh, all things considering, the event was ran well. Um, there was some complaints from parents about how they picked teams and uh, so on, and they didn't exactly follow the format that was put out um, on the NFHS site as to how the event was going to go, and there were some changes made, and it seemed like not everyone knew exactly what was going on and, and what information should be out and so on. And I think that's just goes to, you know, it's a first year event. How many people are really involved in this event? You know, you had people at the coaches association, Chassa, you had, and then Chassa because it's being hosted here was working with, you know, the, their counterparts in Texas and New Mexico Wyoming and you know a couple you know some and then they have to go and get permission from um, the other state organizations if players from out of state or outside of the original four um, or five states that were invited they have to go and get that permission they have to make sure that you know that, that you know private school kids that aren't part of the state association aren't applying to get in and then there was the um the picking of the players to begin with, you know, how, how players were nominated. Um, I know some, and not every player in the state should have been nominated, but, and at the same time, there were some that weren't, there's were some that chose not to do it, which is totally fine. That's their prerogative. Um, you know, who were the, who was the people making those choices? You got to see, um, certain schools seemed to, or it felt like, had um, more of their kids in it than others. You know, why was that? Was it because they were late minute additions? Was it, um, you know, just filling in time, you know, filling in spots, you know, for people that didn't, um, didn't come. There was also, you know, people on the list that didn't come that were at other events um, that were out of state that were invited. Um, so I think... It just goes to more speaking about like how this is going to happen going forward. What are they going to learn from this? And, you know, are they going to cut it down to 100 kids? Are they going to cut it down to 80 kids? Are they going to do it so that um, 
if they keep 150 kids or 170 kids are they going to rotate the courts as to like so that each kid plays on you know if you get four games play at each court you know are they going to do an all-star game or something like that at the end of the at the end of the event um are they going to get you know the are they going to extend the games because they were playing seven minute quarters i've you know we've run our own showcase and we usually just do 16 minute running halves and you know last minute stop clock and that kind of stuff but i've never seen an event run at seven minutes um i've never so so that was unique um i know that there's a time concern there but also i'd heard some other rumors and i don't want to put those out here but if they're true i think that needs to be there needs to be a lot more communication about what the expectations are as you know for for everyone involved at the um at a showcase like that um you know i think overall it was a solid event could it have been better yeah um but i think that just goes to more of having it be better as you know that could have been in two ways one um just tying up some loose ends that kind of seem to fall through you know like the minutes thing or not rotating the the gyms around you know the gym the courts for the players um not putting out that the top 80s in one spot and the bottom 80s in the other um because basically what that did was the that bottom 80 i could see a lot of disgruntled people down there like they didn't get a shot um to get in front of coaches that they hadn't hadn't been in front of before. I have one player say, you know, okay, I'm in the bottom 80, whatever. I don't agree with it, but I'm more upset about not being able to be in front of coaches that I haven't been in front of before because the coaches that I've been talking to, they've already said they're going to come down they're going to see me and so on. But I can understand how that would be frustrating when you're thinking that, oh, I'm going to get a new opportunity this weekend and you get one game. Um, in, in, in the big gym or at, at the first, at the big site or however you want to look at it. Um, so I think that's things that they can learn, you know, the, the organizers and so on can learn from. And I think the event has potential. Um, you know, the second part of making it a better event is the quality of players that are there, not taking away from the 174 that were there, but there is definitely, a ceiling and maybe it was 80 maybe it was a little fewer but there's definitely a ceiling for a lot of our kids and and to attract or a lot of the kids that attended and to attract more division one coaches and high level d2s and so on to the event you have to have very high quality players and not that there wasn't high quality players there but it's more of how many were there you know we can't just have you know, 10 of the division one, or, you know, I went through and I checked and I want to say before the event with the kids that were to come, I think there was about, I'm going to say about 15 that had division one offers. So if you're going to be doing a division one event and you got 174 kids, you've got to up that number of division one kids that are going to be there. How do you do that? I'm not certain. Uh, I think you have to look at what other events are going on. Is it a change of format from the team, from, from individuals to team? Um, I, so I think there's a lot that could, I think there's a possibilities here. I think it could be a really good event. Uh, hopefully the organizers and uh, the people that ran the, the event will look at the event critically and get a lot of information and feedback from college coaches. And there was positive feedback from college coaches as far as, you know, they liked, you know, some, according to one person, some said that um, they liked being able to be in one location and and have all the top kids. That made sense. Um, I like, and, 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 but there was others that were, you know, I talked to one coach specifically and he's like, this is so difficult because the quality of play feels like an open gym. And, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I can offer someone from a showcase. Um, so, you know, there, there's both sides of that. There's got to be a happy medium in there somewhere. I think 
if if the organizers are going to stay with the um, showcase event, I mean, there's got to be changes that are made. And I think one of them is cutting down um, the number of participants. I think another thing is stick to the schedules and the things that you put out. You know, I was really kind of hoping to see the the skills and the um, kind of like a two on two, three on three, you know, something where the kids beforehand are kind of getting a bit better feel for each other as opposed to just walking out and playing. Um, I, th I think there's something there with that, especially if the event's going to be two and a half or two and a quarter days like it was there's got to be something in there where it's you know especially at the beginning so kids can get a better feel for each other um but you know that's just my opinion i, I think you know i did talk to a couple other coaches like yeah we we're kind of interested in seeing how that was going to work out so you know that's that's our thoughts there on the centennial grandstand i think you know, just going back and recapping, I think it's the first time the event's been run. The organizers, the organizers will learn from it and improve it. So um, I'm still very optimistic about what the event can be. Well, thank you for thank you for sending us questions on Twitter and participating in our mailbag discussion here. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all that stuff that people on YouTube do. Uh, we'll be back with more Basketball Colorado as the summer goes and we get to more events and see more players play. And then we'll keep using this as long as you guys are listening and watching. Have a good day.